my dear residents of East Coast. I came to East Coast four years ago. I didn't know anything about East Coast. I was placed to look after Siglap Division. Siglap, where are you? Yeah. Of course, I care for the residents of Changi Seme. Where are you? Bodo, where are you? Kabu Kashi, where are you? In four years, I've been truly humbled. Humbled by the experience, the opportunity to show how much you mean to all of us. We spend hours visiting you. You welcome us to your homes. You accepted our invitation to have a chat, to share with us your concerns, to share with us your deep desires of change, to share with us your inner thoughts. We fully appreciate each and every word that you share with us. For the last four years, all the four of us have done nothing but listened to you. Listened, listened, and listened. And we don't only listen, and we act upon it. We've done all that we can. I'm going to share with you some things that we've done. And what have we done? There's so much that we can talk about today. I just want to share with you two aspects that's dear to my heart. I want to talk to you about how much we've cared for our low-income families. Because low-income families are as much Singaporeans as any of us. And I want to talk about the elderly. Because if without the elderly, we will not be here today. Let me start off with low-income families. This has been dear to my heart. Because as a social worker, everywhere I go, the plight of the low income just draws me. It just comes so naturally today that I cannot see a low income family not being supported. Working in MND and being a social worker and a mayor, I spent many sleepless nights thinking about our low income families, particularly in East Coast GRC. I've seen many of them. I want to help them because I was one of them. In fact, many of us were there before. 50 years we've been here. 50 years we've gone through hardship. 50 years we've seen progress. But for some of them, it took a little bit more time. They're still there. But that doesn't mean they will stay there forever. It means with our help, with our care, we can get them to the best position they can be. First, we want to make sure that every Singaporean who has the potential will become a homeowner. Home ownership is critical. It is a critical enabler that will build resilient families who have the security of a home and an asset to provide for a better future for their children. We consciously facilitated home ownership even for our low-income families, with 80% of them able to own their own homes. Since 2012, more than 1,800 families earning below $1,000 have booked their BTO flat, a two-room BTO flat or larger. $1,000 household income, and they are able to book a two-room BTO flat or larger. Now, where can we find that? It shows that in Singapore, we try our very best to make sure that even the lowest income families in Singapore have the ability to own their own home. Why do we want that? Because we want to make sure they are able to build resilient families in their own homes. In fact, those who cannot afford at the moment, we offer them rental flats. Today, we have 50,000 rental flats run by HDB. We are going to build more, another 10,000 more by 2017. To house some of them, we want to make sure that these are temporary housing. So that those who can continue to afford to own their flats, we will help them. We will do our best to make sure that every family who is able to own their flat 
will be supported. However, some of these families who are in rental flats require some hand-holding, some guidance. I met many of them. We must offer them this opportunity and walk this journey with them. We must show them that not only the government cares, but the community cares. All of us, do we care for them? Do we want them to succeed? Work with us to make sure that they succeed. I'm working hard in my ministry to develop a new fresh, it's called the new, start, the new fresh start housing scheme to provide another opportunity for those who have had flats before. They bought their flats, they sold their flats for whatever reasons. We don't ask them too much questions right now. They end up in rental flats. But they've got young children. We want to give them another chance. We want to give them another chance to build a life, a bright future for their children. And through this new fresh start housing plan, housing scheme, we will do that. How are we going to do that? We have had the experience in East Coast. Some of you may not know. We have a project called Project P. 4650. If you want to try, go and buy 4D. 4650. It has never canal lava. It cannot you tell me. Eh? But the spirit of 4650 is the spirit of East Coast. And what is that spirit? The spirit that we can. Who are these families in blocks 46 and 50? These are families who otherwise had no place to live. They had sold their flats for whatever reasons. It could be divorce, it could be financial hardship, it could be indebtedness. And many of them have got many social issues. There was alcoholism in the family, there was substance abuse, there was domestic violence, there was teen pregnancy, many. And that's one of the reasons, those are the many reasons why they lost their flat, because they couldn't hold on to jobs. They came to us because we provided a safe haven for them. We don't want them to be on the streets. We don't want them in the beaches. We don't want them on the vortex. We give them a safe place for the moment to stay at Block 46 and 50. But we didn't leave them there. We spent hours, we spent nights, we spent days understanding their problems, understanding their issues. We worked very hard. They got many young children. We got community volunteers, volunteers, young people, retirees from the neighborhood coming every night to help their children with their homework. What does that show? It shows East Coast care. Yeah. Yeah. These are all volunteers in the community. We have volunteers who befriend these families, who visit them on a nightly basis, find out how they are doing. We have professional social workers with the support for the Ministry of Social and Family Affairs, Family Development. We have other VWOs coming. Hand in hand, we help these families. For over three years now, we have over 1,000 families. 1,000 families who have walked through the doors of 4650, and more than 70% have successfully moved out. With our help, with our desire to want to make life better for them, and of those, more than 30% of them are able to build their, to buy their own BTO flats. They are now housed in their own homes. How are they able to do that? Because we care. Because East Coast cares. And that's what we are. We are a community who cares for one another. We are a community who will not leave anyone behind. We are a community who will make sure that we walk together with every one of us, even if they are left behind. 
Let me now talk about the aging population and about elderly. I have got elderly parents. My dad passed away last year. He passed away at the age of 91. My mom is today 88 years old. And in four years that I've been in this coast, I've met many elderly. My heart goes to them. Elderly who are in the HDB heartlands, even elderly in the private estates. They all come to us, we go to them, we talk to them. And it happens to each time I get them. Because they're full of life, full of life. So much to share with us. But the one thing we must do, we must show and do and sh that we can. We must act that we can. And we will take care of all our seniors. Over the last four years, every division in East Coast has various programs to look after our elderly. In Bedok, we have CFAA, Community for All Ages. In Changi Sime and in Kampung Chai Chi, we have daycare centers to provide care and programs for our seniors. In Siglap, we have the Silver Blueprint, a comprehensive program to care for the elderly. We introduce the programs like Neighbors for Active Living. What is this program? We learned that in East Coast, there were elderly who were at risk of being readmitted to hospitals. We discussed with Chinese General Hospital. They told us there's a group of elderly and then growing numbers who are going back to hospital three or four times a year. And we found out the reason. One, they have no family support. They were living on their own or with a spouse who's also an elderly. They were not able to follow their medication. And you know when elderly are sick, almost every part of their body is not well. Sometimes they have to take medicine three times a day, two times a day, before food, after food, at night, in the morning. Even for us younger people, we also have difficulty coping, let alone the old. Some of them are at risk of falling down. I have an example here. I'm surprised to see you here. Madam Wong. Madam Wong is here right in front. I first met Madam Wong when I first came to East Coast. I visited her. She lived with her husband then. Both of them had mobility issues. They couldn't even walk to the door. I felt sorry visiting her each time. Because she has to walk from the living room all the way to the door. And she insists on walking. She couldn't walk. I felt so sad for her and her husband. One day, her husband was taken ill. And her husband couldn't stay with her anymore. She, and he ended up in a nursing home. We helped her, in the, we helped him get into a nursing home. And Madam Wong is now alone. But today, Madam Wong is wheelchair bound, but she's not alone. She came here, and she was brought here by Kai Pao. Kai Pao is there. Kai Pao, put out your hand. Kai Pao. Kai Pao, put out your hand. Who is Kai Pao? Kai Pao is her neighbor. Kai Pao lives in that block. Kai Pao looks after Madam Wong now. Kai Pao visits Madam Wong whenever she needed support. Not just Kai Pao, we have other befrienders, but Kai Pao will bring her wherever she needs to go. When she needs to visit her husband in nursing home, Kai Pao is always there. When she needs to go out for recreation because there are some activities elsewhere and she cannot go because she is wheelchair bound, Kai Pao will always be there. And today, I'm so touched because Madam Wong wanted to be here. She told me that. And Kai Pao wanted to be here with her. Can we give Kao Pao and Madam Wong a big round of applause? <laughs> Kao Pao is just one example of the many volunteers that we have in East Coast. Madam Wong is just one example 
of an elderly who needs help, who needs support. An elderly who we must not allow to live alone, socially, emotionally. An elderly who we must show appreciation, care, concern, and above all, an elderly who we must honor. There are many of them out there. The pioneers, women that stand for Yi Tai, so the pioneers. The pioneers are people who we honor, who we must care for. The volunteers are needed. And when we talk about the pioneers, I want to talk a little bit more also about another group of elderly who I've met in the last four years. These are all my elderly who are living in the private estates. We cannot assume that the elderly who live in private estates are without needs. We cannot assume that the elderly who live in private estates are functioning well and managing on their own. They talk to us. They speak with us. They tell us they also have needs. They tell us they are retirees. Even if they live in big houses, they have needs too. We must connect with them. We must understand those needs also. Today, we are very fortunate. We have moved one step ahead. We have the Pioneer Generation Package, which shows that we care and support our pioneers, regardless of whether they are in the HDB heartlands, the condominiums, or the landed property. Because the elderly deserve, the pioneers deserve all our support. The pioneers deserve all our attention. The pioneers deserve all our appreciation. So what do we do now? <clears throat> Volunteers like Kai Pao. Now we have what we call, who we call, the Pioneer Generation Ambassadors. I was tasked to start the Pioneer Generation Office at the national level. This is an office that we decided to develop and start to show that we really care for our pioneers. We developed this office because we want to have a pool of community volunteers with a heart to reach out to these pioneers, to tell them thank you, to tell them we care for you, to tell them we will look after you, and to reduce their anxiety about healthcare costs, because they are very concerned about healthcare costs. Today, my dear residents, within nine months, in East Coast GRC, our volunteers, our Pioneer Generation Ambassadors, have reached out to 9,000 of our pioneers. Reached out meaning, knocked on the door, met with them, and talked to them. 9,000 in nine months. Give a big round of applause to all our volunteers. <laughs> Who are these volunteers? It's all of you. Many of you are here, I'm sure. You have the heart. You care for them and you show that East Coast cares. 9,000 9, pioneers visited, spoken to, and cared for. Meaning that it's about 1,000 a month. And mind you, these are all volunteers. Volunteers with the right heart and the right spirit. They will continue to visit the other pioneers. They will continue to reach out to the other pioneers and ensure that every pioneer out there in East Coast GRC will be acknowledged and supported. Now, they also are prepared to go back to the homes of these pioneers that they have met and do what? And explain. Earlier, they explained the Pioneer Generation Package. After this, they're going to explain medical life. Another government policy. Why is this important? Because we believe that every pioneer out there must understand, must know that we truly care for them. And we will do that. 
We'll continue to do that. We'll continue to make sure that the community shows that we care for all our pioneers. My dear residents, the PAP government truly cares for Singaporeans. We in East Coast GRC care for you, our residents. Whether you are young, whether you are a child, whether you are a teenager, a young adult, whether you are the elderly, whether you are poor, whether you are middle income, whether you are a businessman, we care for you. We want to build a future of opportunities for all. To our pioneers and our elderly, you are our pillar of strength. You have given us so much, so much learning points through your experience for us to grow, for us to mature, for us to be introspective of what we need to do as a community. It is because of you that all of us have grown to show what care in this course really means. It is volunteers like yourselves who will continue to make East Coast special for all of us. Yes! As we mature and develop, we will hold hands together. We will hold the hands of those who are slower and lagging behind. But we will never leave them behind. Some of them may have tripped and fallen, but we will be there to help them up. Am I right? Yeah. They may have tripped and fallen, we'll be there to help them up. We'll be there to help clean their wounds, nurse their wounds, and make them even stronger. And we will then walk with them again. We will make the next 50 years even better for our children and their children because in East Coast, we care for everyone. So my dear residents, let me end by simply asking all of us. Let's vote for the team who truly cares for you, truly cares with you, and truly cares for East Coast, and truly cares for Singapore. Vote POP! Thank you. Thank you for being wonderful, wonderful residents of East Coast. Majula POP! Majula Singapura!